Hey everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Benjamin Ricard. I made this video just to talk about a lot of questions that I get um, pretty much weekly about people and working in different fields in biology and finance and medicine, and they're interested in applying machine learning and machine learning tools to their research, but they may not necessarily have um, some of the exposure or what they think that some of the background. And so I made this video to talk about uh, what other people might consider really basic questions in machine learning, um, but I consider, you know, we could talk a, a whole video about them. So this is what that video is. Uh, so, I mean, just a very sim first simple basic question that I get a lot from people. What is machine learning? Uh, well, in my, there, you'll get a lot of different answers. And in my opinion, it really is a means to an end. In other words, it's, it's this philosophy in which we give, we're given some data. And given this data, we want to make some actionable input or some understanding. Or we want to do something tangible to this data. And I think that this might be in contrary to a lot of um, other you know, sorts of fields. It sounds similar to statistics. Uh, but I think the fundamental idea is that this, there's a given task that ends up being very important, the idea that you're trying to do some task, that that is the end all be all and, and essentially the most important part of what you're attempting to do. So from a biology perspective, you might ask the question of, you know, how do these genes cluster from RNA-seq data? In other words, how can we best represent a given, a given RNA-seq or transcriptome profile? Um, how can we best represent that? How, what, what is the best way to understand this data? Well, as you know, you might know as biology, this is very complex data with a lot of um, you know, very. You have to measure these reads relatively to other uh, sorts of um, you know reference variables. And there's just a lot of uh, problems with this data. And so, how can we best understand this data and use this data to do things like diagnose diseases? And these are very similar questions to how can we take uh, previous stock returns from historical price information or sentiment from these uh, quarterly financial reports or annual financial reports? How can we actually predict the most optimal portfolio allocation? So this idea, again, that we're taking from this historical data, from this data, we actually want to make some actionable uh, decision or we want to figure out and understand this data in some very tangible way. Um, if given uh, if we have radiology slides and notes, and do we want to, how, do we, how can we use these notes, images, and text to actually understand um, somebody's risk of getting cancer from given radiology reports? And how to how also drive cars from given, you know, radio. So there's a lot of different uh, methods using data, essentially, this large amount of data in order to, get, to create an actionable input. Uh, so I think it's really important to differentiate the idea that there's these two different kind of paths in ML. There's really two different ways that you can kind of think about going forward. And so the first uh, I kind of think of is really, you know, this is very the hardcore machine learning researchers, the, optim the people who are interested in optimization. And uh, usually, you know, you would need a very strong background in computer science and mathematics. Um, and I wouldn't sugarcoat Cody. You would probably need years of uh, formal education in these. And I'm sure you could do it on your own, but it would take a lot of effort on very specific parts of computer science and mathematics and, and um, these sorts of approaches and then learning about the field. Uh, but I think that you know, if you're really coming from the perspective, and this is what I'm interested in, in helping other people uh, pursue, is really is helping other people that might be in another field, might be in finance and biology and robotics and medicine, and they're really interested in, well, how can I use these new machine learning research uh, techniques uh, here? And I think really for that, uh, you don't need as much of the, the really complicated mathematics and computer science. I think you, with the amount of knowledge that you might already have in your field, it might be more than enough to actually run a pretty successful machine learning algorithm um, to really improve your research or your analytics to the next uh, step. And so this, in, the, in the other field, again, you don't, it would be very, very helpful to have these, this background in this other field that you're interested in applying. But even if you don't, uh, one of the powers of just applying machine learning is pretty easy to just apply it to a field that even you might not even know necessarily a lot about. So when it comes down to it, what do you actually need to do machine learning? And I think if, if you're watching this on a computer, your computer probably can do some, although if you're really, really interested in doing large scale machine learning, you probably would need a dedicated GPU. Um, but the other thing that I think is really kind of more constrained, you really need data. You need the kind of proper, enough data to really learn uh, something meaningful. Obviously, the more data you can get, the better, uh, but that can kind of be a constraint, especially when it's $1,000 to get a single sequence or something like that. So it can be very difficult to get the amount of data that you would need for machine learning. Um, and I think that when, when, when you're really thinking about it from this perspective of asking yourself, what do I need to do if I was willing, if I wanted to do these sort of machine learning cases, is really thinking a lot about your specific use and thinking a lot about your field. So there's been a lot of work done in your field, whatever your field that is, I'm sure that there has been using these machine learning models and then understanding what kinds of techniques, what kind of specific domains they are into. So my background is in biochemistry and finance and data science uh, and medicine and biology and, and statistics. And so I have some, a very, some of these backgrounds that I intend to go to a little bit more uh, in future videos. But in, if you don't have any of these records, that I highly recommend to really go and, and try to find resources for the exact case that you're really interested in uh, pursuing. And then 
learning from what other people have done. And uh, once you can kind of learn from other people, it's actually not too hard if you have this, uh, you know, introductory level of programming knowledge. So you will need to at least not be uh, uh, scared of programming. Um, you may not, you don't necessarily need to be the best programmer in the world. If you, if you can run a few lines of code in R or, P or P uh, Python or C++ or any kind of programming language, you probably know enough to, to do uh, really cool machine learning stuff. Um, and it's kind of similar to that as, as before. It's, uh, calculus, statistics, and linear algebra, these things are all very, very, very helpful. They're not necessarily extremely relevant. In, in future videos, I'm going to go through all of these at a very baseline level. Um, but for, for really understanding it, it, it would really help you out. Um, and I think improve your models if you had at least some fundamental level. And you don't need to necessarily be an expert, uh, but if you can, you know, just think about maybe passing or, or at that level of, of taking these classes at a undergraduate level would be definitely very, very helpful, but also still not necessary. So as an example of just a very, uh, the first kind of math that we're gonna see when we talk about machine learning is this, the most basic machine learning algorithm. And, and this is kind of really a lot of machine learning algorithms. Uh, we essentially have some function of X of the data. So we have some model of the data and we wanna make some decision Y. And that's essentially it. And if we can figure out a way to define the X very well, to define what our data is very well, we can figure out a way to define what our Y is very well. The rest of it actually becomes easier than you would think. Even if we, it's very complicated for us, it's still easy if we can well, well define what we want to do and what we are, what we have, and what we want to do. And knowing those two things will really help us understand our machine learning models and be able to help us improve and uh, actually train really powerful models to learn these abstract functions. So like I just said, you need to really think about, I think the most important thing about machine learning is when you're thinking about your case is what is your data? What is the data that you're interested in using? If you're working on radiology, you might have images, you might have slides that might be 3D, uh, they might be stacked on top of each other to get different uh, depth sections. If you're working with financial data, you might have a lot of time series of periodic returns from a bunch of different stocks or different, a bunch of different indices, a um, bunch of prices on, on whatever kind of data. If you're interested in some kind of social media or sentiment analysis, you'll have a bunch of different posts, probably from different uh, social media platforms. And if you're interested in you know, high throughput sequencing, you might have a matrix, these matrix of reads and relative counts uh, that represents your transcriptome or your big omics like data set. Um, and so given you, know, these, you have these, uh, these data, so that, that might be the easier case for some people, but then trying to figure out what do you actually want to get out of the data. So given the radiology slide, what would be interesting to actually get out of that? What, what direct inferences would, do you think a model can actually learn from and be able to create something that would somebody would care about, essentially? And so this idea is, can you take those radiology slides and can you predict cancer diagnosis? Or can you have a better than, um, you know, or at least on par with a physician accurate cancer diagnosis, help them um, be able to evaluate their reports with the use of this AI tool? Um, for financial data, you know, what is the optimal risk-adjusted return? These are, if you can think about, these are all very tangible endpoints, and we can kind of think about, um, how we can go from the data to the out to the output, but knowing that we have a data, knowing that we have an output, I think those two are the most important things. And if you can do that, the, the rest of it kind of becomes a lot easier. Uh, social media posts, we give sentiment on a given topic, for example, or high throughput sequencing. And so this one's a little bit different. So you don't necessarily need a direct label or direct action. You could just say, well, given the data itself, how does this data look? And what's the best way to look at the data that I already have? In this case, what they kind of do is they kind of use itself as, a, as an output. And we'll see a little bit more of that in a second. Uh, so this first, uh, this first paper comes from, uh, a demonstration comes from a paper uh, where they were taking these breast cancer uh, radiology images. And as you can see, we can see the breast cancer radiologists at the bottom. And we're able, they have a stack of them and they put them into this convolutional neural network. And at the end, they have this output of malignant or non-malignant or benign or non-benign. So you see it's a very well-defined input with the images and they know exactly what they're starting with and they know exactly what they're trying to get. And we're gonna go a little bit more into the inner details of these neural networks like this in later videos. Um, but so it might not be very obvious right now, but, but really the most obvious things and what they will know and what they, they started with is they knew that they had these images in this form and they also knew that they wanted to get these decisions and then they structured their network around those two things. And it's really important because it's only going to be, your data is only going to be as good, your model is only going to be as good as your data, and your, your data is only going to be as good as your model, right? And so the idea is that you can only, um, you know, you really want to well-define these inputs and outputs uh, to have something really important and meaningful to learn off of. So another example of when you're talking about optimal stock portfolio allocation is another way that people kind of use this uh, machine learning model is they use what's called reinforcement learning. And so they, they'll essentially have a state 
uh, a given given day, you have some out optimal allocation or some portfolio allocation of your stocks. Do you want to make any allocations? Should you sell this one? Should you buy this one? How should you rebalance your portfolio, essentially? And that's essentially the actor network deciding what action to make. And then you have a, this critic network, which will, given that, that you made that action, what was the price or how much was your return that day or whatever time period you're interested in looking at. And then this will combine together in a larger network, essentially, to give you a new model, which is this QSA, which will give you a new model of the state and action uh, to make given the state. So essentially, this idea is that you're given... Uh, you, you train every single day sequentially. And this is kind of more helpful. I think the reason I put this so, I think if you understand stocks as being a different return every day and that there's this sort of time series structure, it's kind of interesting that there are these sort of networks and AI architectures that kind of learn with that and will be able to learn uh, with the newest data. And so these are kind of more interesting ways that other people have, already, have done this. So I think, again, it's important to look at what other people in your given field have done, even if you may not understand exactly the inner workings right now, uh, it's important to at least see all kind of words. So are they using CNNs like they were using before for image segmentation? Or are they using reinforcement learning? Or maybe the, there's a lot of fields that use both. So it's important to identify which ones of those you're most interested in. And so for this last example, this is using from single cell RNA-seq representations. Uh, so they essentially have a bunch of transcriptomic data and they're actually using gene ontology labels. So they're essentially saying, well, we know that there's some given structure of the genes based on some other people have defined this and done research on this. So we're, we're adding that to our network in order to figure out how to best interpret this single cell RNA data. And again, so this one, uh, the input is actually the same as the output, and that's because they're just saying, well, we want to reconstruct the input later. And so this is called an autoencoder. This is a very specific type of neural network that we'll get into more into later videos. But this is just an example of how they start with some tangible problem. They, they have their transcend or their tangible data and they really want to figure out a way to represent that in a more efficient space or a way to learn from that data on some actionable input. And on the, fast, on the last example, I'm going to talk about the YouTube algorithm because I definitely would help me out if you could smash that like button, leave a comment if there's anything else you want me to talk about, and subscribe because all of these things are actually used by the YouTube algorithm's neural network to actually determine which of these videos they're going to give to somebody else. So if you really help me out, help out the algorithm, help the training of deep learning of the algorithm by giving me that like. But essentially, this idea is that we're going to, from the, the given videos, they make some representation of you. They make some idea of what you, they think you are. And then they artificially rank a bunch of videos based on what this ideal representation of you would do, essentially. So they're trying to make a version of you and then predict if you would like it. So the idea is if you do like something, that they wouldn't be more likely to show you something else that you would similarly like in the future. But that's all I have for right now. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.